So you're interested in Vipassana meditation, huh? Well, I've been through two different 10 day Vipassana courses and let me tell you everything about Vipassana that I've experienced because it's kind of pretty intense, but also not in the same way. It's pretty grounding. The first meditation course that I ever took uh, with Vipassana was in like 2014, something like that. Some mutual friends of mine uh, seemed like they were getting a lot of value over it, out of it, and I was like, hmm, I'm into crazy stuff. This sounds pretty enticing. 10 days of meditation with 10 hours of meditating each day. It is nothing but meditation. And I don't like to talk shoot on other meditation courses, but this type of meditation course is so focused on the practice that it is, it is as close to living a monk life as you can get. And that's pretty awesome to be able to experience just for 10 days the life of a monk, the lifestyle of a monk. You're getting, at these 10-day meditation courses, uh, with the Goinka Vipassana style, you're getting fed every day, um, sleeping quarters are all to yourself and separate from everybody else. There's a big mantra of, you know, let's not talk or engage with each other uh, during the meditation course until day nine or ten, nine. Um, which really creates an atmosphere of, we're just here to practice and we're all practicing together. So I entered into wanting to take a meditation course uh, in 2014 with not a lot of knowledge other than just reading the pamphlet and being like, yeah, I can get behind these. I think I can pretty much give up everything in my life for 10 days. And it was the most impactful experience I think I had ever had up until that point um, as far insofar as like taking time to figure out what's going on inside my brain. Um, my first course was in Pecatonica, Illinois, at that little uh, meditation retreat center before they got remodeled. I think in the last 10 years they've expanded in and it's a lot nicer, but it was pretty nice back then. I enjoyed it. And I came back in the middle of college from this meditation course uh, with just a gung-ho attitude about meditating. So after that 100 hours of meditating during the course, I came back and I meditated two hours every day for an entire year, which was, you, you think, think about your life right now and imagine meditating for an hour in the morning and then another hour in the evening. When would you squeeze that in to your busy, busy life? And I don't know how I did it, but I did uh, because you tend to focus on the things that matter and sometimes spiritual meditating practice takes priority and so I had the gumption and the motivation to do it and I think I had a lot of benefits from it. My mind was so focused and was able to sift clearly through a lot of my thoughts and sit with some tough feel feelings at the time and it was a little difficult socially because, you know, it's like, oh, 9 to 10 o'clock, you know, sorry guys, I'm going to meditate. But there's ways to work it in a little bit fun. I very distinctly remember meditating at a party, uh, and I think I had a bald head at the time just because it was, it was fun to feel like Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, and I remember sitting in this party on a couch meditating not taking in or reacting to anything that else that's going on around me and I was surrounded by good friends and I just got a couple kisses on the heads to which I have no idea who actually did that because my eyes were closed and I couldn't tell <laughs> uh, but other than that party um, just the benefits were so it's, it's hard to nail down because that was a very transformative period of my life at, towards the end of college and I think this really catalyzed a lot of honing in on who I am and what I want to do and just gave me a lot of clear-headedness, really. Uh, I ended up getting so egotistically tied to the practice, though, because as you can imagine, if you meditate for two hours a day and you're in friend groups that think meditation is cool, it's such an ego buff to be like, yeah, I, I've been meditating two hours every day, you know, for the badass type of thing um and it is cool it is cool but i had to drop the practice after a year and or i felt like that would be 
it, it was time. It was time to move on, try, try other things, um, other types of meditation and whatnot. And so that was just uber impactful for myself. Then fast forward about 10 years, 10 years later? Yeah. Earlier this year in April, I did another 10 day meditation course to kind of ramp up on uh, living a healthy lifestyle. And I saw that meditating frequently did me good in the past, could do me some good now. And so in April, took another 10 day course in Texas and that was really wonderful. Beautiful meditation retreat center there at the Vipassana Center. Really nice pagoda that you can go silently meditate at. Really beautiful tile work everywhere, all around all the buildings. Huge meditation hall with a big, big open airspace inside. Super conducive to meditating. And uh, man, it was hard. I remember on day one, I was like, Oh my gosh, it's not even noon on day one, and I I'm losing my mind. This is crazy. And each day just kind of progressed up until like day six or seven. I was like, ooh, we still got a lot, you know, eight days left, you know, seven days left, six days left. How am I going to do this? And then by day seven, I was like, oh my gosh, my time here is so limited. I just, you really feel like you're making progress when you're doing the body scans and you're feeling stuff and maybe you're feeling different things. Maybe you're feeling nothing at all, but that's all progress because you're paying attention to how the body is feeling in the moment. And there's nothing more grounding than a basic meditation practice. And for me, I do like structure. I like instructions for certain types of things. I, I freestyle on a lot of other types of creative endeavors, but it is nice to have that kind of Buddhist scientific uh, modality of like, here's how to meditate. Here's the structure of it. It's extremely straightforward. There's really no questions about it. There, there can be some questions if you start overthinking it, but then you just kind of got to reel it back and be like, all I'm doing is feeling and paying attention to my body. Keep on bringing that concentration back to the center. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything about uh, Vipassana because it is almost imperative for the practice to experience at least a 10-day meditation retreat to really get down how to do this and to be able to talk with the teacher to answer some basic questions is really, really helpful. But so hopefully I'm not spoiling too much uh, and only spoiling enough to get you more interested in this wonderful, healthy practice. Uh, healthy for some people. It's, I don't, I would not say it's for everybody, but if you like extreme type of activities, then this meditation style is for you. So yeah, basically the meditation retreat is divided into two parts. The first third, no matter how, length, how long the retreat is, you could give yourself a three-day retreat. And so one day of it would be um, set aside for concentration meditation. Really honing in on these are the sensations that I'm feeling right next to my nose. And you're just trying to sharpen the acute sense of awareness for right here. Feeling that air come in, go out, all that type of stuff. Maybe the, there's wind. Ideally, you're inside and there's not a lot of external influences uh, affecting your sensations. And so, I mean, the body is moving all the time. There is a hundred billion cells in everyone's body and you can really start to hone in on feeling a lot of subtle changes. And so the second part of every Vipassana retreat moves on to body scanning. Basically, you take that awareness that you've acquired and you start to feel from head to toe and from toe to head and mix and match it up however organically makes sense for you at the time. And you start to feel just a lot of things going on. And that is very grounding. And it seems really healthy and catalytic to developing a focused mind. It's very difficult 
to not develop a focused mind when you are just purely trying again and again to feel what's going on inside your own body. And towards the end of the course, uh, the teacher Goinka, his recordings mentioned that there's, there's a lot of different depths that you can feel. And like, I'll just skip straight to the end. The final form, more or less, is feeling all of your nerve endings up and down your spine and just feeling this. And I felt it a little bit that I haven't really talked about this one time. And I just felt this crazy amount of energy down at my base and it started coming up and then I started thinking about it too much and then it went away. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of subtlety that you can feel and there's a lot of uh, non-subtlety that is also happening. So, I don't even know where I'm going with this conversation. I would highly recommend Vipassana to just about anybody that's wanting Oh man, it's it's a beautiful reset. If you're feeling like you want to do some crazy change in your life, you want to alter some things, you want to change some habits, this is a 180 degree flip from your regular lifestyle. And coming back from that, it's hard to let go of it right away because, I mean, you're used to meditating 10 hours a day. Coming back and meditating 2 hours a day? That's it? Easy. Do I meditate two hours a day currently? No, not really. I've kind of dropped off on the practice. But I still wanted to make this video because Vipassana has been eternally impactful for myself, my sanity, and uh, just overall how I think and feel and feel grounded. So, hope this video was somewhat helpful. Uh, yeah, keep the discussion going down in the comments.